Now, I don't know if you know this, but goaltenders kind of need their eyeballs. Welcome to From Center Ice. My name is Courtney and I am here to talk about the Tuesday night game between the Chicago Blackhawks and the New Jersey Devils. The Devils were wearing their jersey jersey jersey, so I am also wearing the jersey jersey jersey. It is highly controversial and controversial in the way that people either love it or they hate it. I am one of the people who loves it. Obviously, I have one. So since they were the team that the Blackhawks faced off against, I figured I would have some fun and put on the jersey jersey jersey. I do not have the jersey hat hat. I want the hat hat. I do not have it though. Maybe one day I will be blessed with its presence. But before I jump into talking about the goals that were scored, and that won't take very long because there really wasn't much to talk about, there was a pretty big lineup change for the Blackhawks heading into this game. Earlier in the day, it was revealed that Jonathan Taves had flu-like symptoms, so he was out for the game with non-COVID illness. It was unknown for a while if the Hawks were going to be able to call somebody up in time or if they would have to run with 11 forwards and seven defensemen. But to the pleasant surprise of Blackhawks fans, they were able to call up somebody from Rockford, and that somebody was Lucas Reichel. So most people's favorite Blackhawks prospect was able to get into his first NHL action of the season, and from what I saw of him, he looked a bit more confident facing off against NHL talent this year than what we saw of him last season. He's still not ready to make the jump full-time, and he was sent back down to Rockford after the game, thankfully, because the Ice Hogs played the very next night and it was a one to nothing game in the third period in favor of the Milwaukee Admirals, but Isaac Phillips passed that puck to Lucas Reichel. Lucas Reichel shot the puck into the net, tying the game. That took it to overtime. Nobody scored in overtime, so it went to a shootout, and Lukas Reichel got the shootout winner as Yaroslav Askarov was coming way out of his net, and Reichel just flipped it over him into the net, making it look like that's something super easy to do. So Blackhawks fans, I know that you want him to put up points at the NHL level, and those points will come. Just know the kid has a lot of talent. He is doing a lot of good things down in the American League for the Ice Hogs, and once he is ready, you will have fun watching him in the NHL. But Hawks fans and the front office and coaching staff were able to get a bit of a taste of where Lucas Reichel stands at this point and see how he has progressed from last year. And again, even though he didn't score any points, I think it was a positive impression. So moving on, let's talk about the goals that were scored in this game. 11 minutes and 27 seconds into the first period. The puck was in the Blackhawks defensive zone. They were able to pop it out into the neutral zone so they could go off and get a line change. Unfortunately for the Hawks, it ended up on probably the worst possible stick that it could, that being Jack Hughes. I'm so sorry, maybe it was my fault. But Jack corralled the puck at center ice. He broke into the offensive zone, and that's all fine and good, but while he was, you know, skating the puck through the offensive zone, he danced around Reese Johnson, Jason Dickinson, Seth Jones, and Philip Roos. That was one guy, number 86, for the New Jersey Devils against four Blackhawks. And Jack Hughes just made that seem like that was the most natural thing in the world to be able to do because he held onto the puck quite easily, got to the bottom of the right circle where he found Dougie Hamilton entering the offensive zone at the top of of the left circle, he sent just an effortless pass to him. And I say effortless because he made it look effortless. Obviously, it takes a lot of skill to do what Jack Hughes does. But Hughes found Hamilton with the pass. Hamilton hit that one-timer past Arvid Soderblom into the net. One, two, nothing, devils. And before I go any further, I must say that this game was a matchup between one of the hottest teams in the NHL and then the Blackhawks. 
Everybody knows the Boston Bruins are having a fantastic season that nobody would have guessed, seeing as they had a bunch of very key injuries to start the year, yet they've somehow just been atop the league the whole time. Well, if you haven't been paying as much attention to the standings as a whole, the New Jersey Devils are tied in points with the Bruins. They have played one more game and did lose that in regulation, so technically the Bruins are above them having a better point points percentage. But the point stands. Coming into this game against the Blackhawks, the New Jersey Devils had a record of 24 and 1. That is 20 wins, 4 regulation losses, and 1 overtime or shootout loss. I believe they only need one more win or two points in order to tie their point total from last season or something ridiculous of that sort. So again, if you haven't been paying attention but you were last year and saw that the Devils were near the bottom of the league and that was mostly because they had the curse that the Blackhawks do this year and that their goaltenders were always injured, you must remove the notion from your head that this is still the bottom feeder New Jersey Devils team, because they are certainly not. They are very, very good. So anyway, it was one to nothing Devils about halfway through the first period, a little over halfway through, and there were no other goals scored, so that is how these teams went into the first intermission. On to the second period. Five minutes and 30 seconds into the second period, Jesper Brett had the puck on the right wing in the offensive zone. He drew a penalty, but the Blackhawks did not touch it. So on the delayed penalty, Jesper Brett was able to pass that puck over to the left side of the ice to the captain, Nico Heischer, who was pretty close and tight on Arvid Soderblom, but he was able to smack that puck, getting a very nice shot off. But Arvid Soderblom came came up with a fantastic stop, stretching out to his right to stop Nico Heischer with that right toe. And that was also kind of a theme for the night, but I will talk about that in just a little bit. Unfortunately for Arvid and the Blackhawks, after that save, the Devils were able to get the puck. They got it up to the point to Siegenthaler. Somehow, Nico Heischer went from being down low in the left corner to just kind of teleporting over to the top of the right circle. Siegenthaler hit him with the pass. He took the shot. That went in. Arvid Soderblom did not have his stick on that. And the game was 2 to nothing in favor of the Devils. And that one just kind of sucked. I'm not gonna say it was a weak goal by Arvid because I personally don't think it was. It just sucks because he made such a great save right before that. But if you see it on the highlights, it wasn't very long after until he sure was able to, again, teleport over to the other side of the ice and get another shot off that did end up going in the net. Such is the life of a Blackhawks goaltender. But moving on to 14 minutes and 58 seconds into the second period, the New Jersey Jersey Devils are on a power play. Jujar Kara comes up with a shot block, but the Devils are able to get it back, keep it in the zone, move the puck around. Dougie Hamilton has the puck at the point. He sends it over to Jack Hughes in the left circle, and all of the Blackhawks defenders, all four of them that were on the ice, saw Jack Hughes get the puck, and they all just kind of swarmed him. Now, they weren't all super close to him, but you could just see the swarm happening, like he was a magnet, and they were just being pulled toward him. Well, what happens when four defenders go toward one guy with the puck. You have Jesper freaking Brat all alone in the right circle. And again, remember, Jack Hughes is the one with the puck, and Jack Hughes just kind of makes things happen on the ice. Think like Patrick Kane light. Well, Hughes sees a lane open up. He sends a cross ice pass to Jesper Brat, who absolutely blasts a one-timer into the net past Arvid Soderblom. And the game was three to nothing in favor of the Devils in the second period. And there were no other goals scored in the second period, so these two teams went into the second intermission with the game three to nothing in favor of the Devils. On to the third period. And nobody scored. So the game ended three to nothing in favor of the New Jersey Devils. The final shots on goal total was 29 to 24 in favor of the Devils, which is kind of unfortunate because there were actually points in this game where the Blackhawks were leading in shots on goal. 
which was kind of a surprise to me as somebody who does tune into Devil's Games here and there because they are a very fun team to watch. But the Hawks were actually getting some quality scoring chances, but Vitek Vanacek down in net at the other end did have to come up with some massive saves of his own. On the power play, the Blackhawks had three chances. Obviously, they scored on none of them. The Devils had two opportunities. They converted on one of them, that being the Jesper Bratt one-timer. Blocked shots favored the Blackhawks 22 to 11. Hits also favored the Blackhawks 13 to 7, so not an overly physical game here, but that's kind of to be expected with how these two teams play. Well, how we think that the Blackhawks play and how the Devils actually play, because there have been games this year where the Hawks have a lot of hits. But on the other hand, Jared Tenorti is also out with an injury right now, so that could also explain that. And something that was kind of shocking to me, but the Blackhawks also had the advantage in faceoff percentage for the game at 52%. Again, Jonathan Taves did not play in this game because he was sick, so the other guys taking draws held up their end. Not something we are overly used to with the Blackhawks outside of Jonathan Taves, so that was nice. And for those interested, Ian Mitchell also played in this game. Obviously, he did not register a point because the Blackhawks as a whole did not register a point. He was even when it comes to plus minus at a zero, which is fairly decent seeing as he had 17 minutes and 19 seconds of time on ice and he saw one minute and 11 seconds on the power play in this game. Now, if they are going to have Ian Mitchell up with the Blackhawks, they probably should try him out on the power play a bit more. That's kind of his thing down in Rockford and he's very good at it. He has a great shot from the blue line. I get it. They have Seth Jones, they have Philip Ruse, they have these guys that they've been using on the power play. But what do you have to lose in trying the kid? Because you're already losing games. So before they send him back down when we get our injured guys back, I'd say just throw him out there on the first unit, see what he does. Anyway, like I mentioned, Lucas Reichel was also in this game, obviously also did not register a point. He was a minus one on the game when it comes to plus minus, but we all know that plus minus is kind of a flawed stat or a very flawed flawed stat. I just thought I would include it for funsies. He had 13 minutes and 58 seconds of time on ice, and he played three seconds more than Ian Mitchell on the power play, logging one minute and 14 seconds. But Lucas Reichel also took four face-offs in this game against the Devils, and he won three of them. So he had a 75% face-off efficiency in Tuesday night's game, and I say that's great for the kid. I'm not sure specifically where the Devils sit in face-off percentage within the league, but even still, Lucas Reichel is still only 20 years old and won three of four face-offs in the game. I will take that any day. You will probably take that any day. And I will tell you that he has gotten better at them in Rockford as well. So that's something to keep an eye on. I mentioned the whole face-off argument in the last video, some people thinking that they are important, some people thinking face-offs don't matter at all and just ignore the stat. Again, I land somewhere in the middle. They are an important part of the game, but they aren't the deciding factor of whether you win or lose a game. Obviously, seeing as the Blackhawks sit number one in the league in face-off efficiency, and yet they are near dead last in the league. But the guy that I really wanted to talk about here is Arvid Soderblom. Last season, he was thrown into a few NHL games and they were pretty rough outings for him. So while those that kept up with the Ice Hogs and watched Ice Hogs games or followed along online with people covering them, they knew that Arvid was very solid in net for the Piggies. But for people who weren't following along and only saw him in NHL action with the Blackhawks, they definitely had a very sour opinion of Arvid. And he is still a young goaltender and he definitely still needs needs time in the American Hockey League to really develop his craft, but the Blackhawks don't have much of an option right now, seeing as Peter Mrazek and Alex Stalock are both out with injury, and they just refuse to go out and get some random guy they could throw in net so they can have their prospects in the American League like they planned on doing. But things don't always go according to plan, so where we sit in the season right now, Arvid Soderblom, the prospect goaltender, has played the most games out of all of the Blackhawks goaltenders. But because of that, I think that people are really starting to see the potential in his game, seeing that he can be the guy 
He's not ready just yet, but he can be the guy in the future. Of course, the Blackhawks also have Drew Camesso playing in college, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens when they have Soderblom and Camesso. If they can both develop into everyday NHL goaltenders, that would be great. We all know having a solid tandem gets you pretty far. But anyway, just in this Tuesday game against the Devils, Arvid came up with some absolutely massive saves in this one, especially early. And even less than five minutes in, he got smacked in the face with a puck, knocking his mask off. So he was just getting hit all over with pucks. He was diving to his left, diving to his right, stretching out this way, stretching out that way, and keeping a lot of pucks out of the net. He ended up making 26 of 29 saves. That was only good for an 897 save percentage on the game, but that definitely definitely does not tell the story of how he played at all. And of course, to give credit to the guy on the other side, as I mentioned before, Vitek Vanacek had a fantastic game in net for the Devils. I don't believe he had to make as many quality saves as Arvid did, but he definitely had to come up with some great stops and some very key stops for his team. And he got the shutout. So while Arvid's teammates were trying to help him out a bit more in this one by getting some quality scoring chances, the guy on the other end was shutting it down. But I don't think you can blame Soderblom for any of the three goals that went in on him especially the two one-timers that were set up from the opposite side of the ice by Jack Hughes on both of them. Again, maybe that was my fault, but along with his great play less than a minute into the third period, the Devils were setting up a scoring chance. Tomas Tatar was in front of the net, and after Arvid stretched out to his left to make a stop, I don't know if the puck hit him, hit the post, whatever, either way, it stayed out of the net. But Tomas Tatar's stick somehow ended up hitting Arvid in the right eye region because his stick just snuck in between the hole in the mask. You do not see this happen very often. We saw it happen to Darcy Kemper in the playoffs this past spring. But this time, it happened to Arvid Soderblom. Thankfully, it was not as bad as what happened to Kemper. But it was kind of scary for a moment as he went down on the ice, was holding his face, then took the mask off and just was holding his eye. And before we knew he was okay, you have them showing the replays of a stick hitting him in the eye region, just Arvid holding his eye like, oh my god, is, did he actually get hit in the eye? Is he gonna be injured now too? Goaltenders kind of need their eyeballs. I would assume, I have never played the goaltending position, but I would assume it would be very hard to do that if you could not see, because you need to see the puck in order to stop the puck most of the time. Of course, you can get lucky and it can just hit you if you are in a good position, but even then, you kind of have to know where you have to be by judging your sight lines and seeing the blue paint and your posts in your peripheral and all of that. So goaltenders, especially NHL goaltenders, kind of need their eyeballs. And it's fortunate that we don't see this happen very often, but those holes in the masks are just big enough for sticks to sneak through there. And Tuesday night, it did. It was not intentional or malicious at all by Tomas Tatar. I'm just gonna throw that out there now. I don't think anybody is saying that it was. I haven't seen that, at least. Okay, maybe there is somebody somewhere in the depths of the ugly internet where somebody is saying, obviously, Tomas Tatar was able to react in, like, point one second to somehow fit the blade of his stick just expertly through the hole in Soderblom's mask. We all know that crazy exists on the internet, so I'm not going to say that nobody was saying it. But again, this is also the internet, and I don't want anybody to misconstrue what I am saying and think that I'm saying it was intentional. So that was a long rant just to say that, you know, Tatar accidentally hit Arvid in the face with a stick. But it was rather scary. You had Jackson Stauber on the bench starting to get his gear on in case he had to come in. Thankfully, Soderblom was able to stay in the game and it seemed like he was fine. He ended up making a save pretty shortly after play resumed, about a few seconds, and it, the puck came from the side where he was hit in the eye region. So I'm assuming he's okay. We also haven't heard anything otherwise, so. There you have it. But it was still a rather scary moment and I would 
really appreciate it if our goaltenders would stop getting injured or nearly injured or appearing to be injured. We already have our two NHL goaltenders out. They are sitting on their supposed AHL starting goaltender, but he's been up with the Blackhawks more than he has been down with the Icehogs. He only played the first two games of the season for the Piggies. And at some point, I would really, really like to have him back. Thankfully, the guys filling in for him have been doing their job and doing it pretty well down here, but you want your number one guy in net to stabilize the position. So going forward, please stop injuring our goaltenders. That is all I ask. Actually, that is not all I ask because I have one more ask and that is for the Blackhawks management to please just go out and get another veteran goaltender to throw in the net. I am begging you. But now we must move on and uh, moving on is probably a good thing for this Blackhawks team because they have now been shut out twice in a row, both with the score of three to nothing, first to the New York Islanders, then Tuesday night to the New Jersey Devils. For their next matchup, thankfully they come back home to the United Center tomorrow night, Friday night, but they face off against the Winnipeg Jets. Last time they played the Winnipeg Jets, they got absolutely smacked. So Seven to two, and the Jets just so happen to be the first place team in the Central Division. So do we see another three to nothing shutout game? We shall see. Do we see another game that is more closely similar to a seven to two beatdown, but the Hawks are able to get on the board? We shall see. The only thing that the Hawks possibly have going in their favor in this one is that the Jets also do play tonight against the St. Louis Blues. And I looked it up before recording, it is confirmed that Connor Hellebuck is playing in that game. So it is possible that the Blackhawks get the backup treatment tomorrow with Dave Riddick in net. But when your starting goaltender is Connor Hellebuck, you aren't too concerned about playing him back to back. So that's kind of up in the Air. But I do have their top three scorers as they sit right now. Again, they play tonight, so by the time uh, tonight is over, these could perhaps be out of date, but the game hasn't started yet, so this is where they stand. The Winnipeg Jets are led in points by defenseman Josh Morrissey. He's got five goals and 22 assists for 27 points on the season so far. Up next is Kyle Connor with 10 goals and 16 assists for 26 points. And third, last but not least, we have Pierre-Luc Dubois, the guy who desperately wants out of Winnipeg but can't seem to find a way to leave. He's got 11 goals and 14 assists for 25 points on the season. Oh, and the Blackhawks could possibly get Sam Lafferty back for tomorrow's game, so I guess that's also something that could be going in their favor. But that's going to do it for me in this video. If you would like to hear more from me or from Center Ice, you can head on over to fromcenterice.com. There's links to absolutely all of the places you can find us over there. If you are more of a social media person, you can follow us on all of the platforms. Those links are down in the description for you. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and do that. Give this video a like, that would make me so very happy. Unlike the Blackhawks losing three to nothing in back-to-back -back games, but such is life. Anyway, all of that being said, thank you all so very much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. Get ready for another game against the Jets tomorrow night, and I will catch y'all in the next video. Bye guys.